511 looks great to me. Now this one here, let's just put in an intermediate step. Um, it's half times the square root of 32. So if I have that half hanging out the front there, what can I pull out of the square root of 32? That'll be a nice quick way to simplify this. Any takers? I can take out the square root of 16. Why did you choose 16, by the way, and not say 8? Eight? 8's a big number. Why 16? 8 is not a thinger. Yeah, 8, yes, that's right. Not a thinger. Not useful at all. 16 is a square number. So if I pull that out, do you agree? The square root of 16, of course, is 4. And a half times 4 is exactly what Daniel had there for the two. Uh, and last one here to finish off. What's been pulled out this time? 4 and 11. Yep, so this time we've got the square root of 4, square root of 11. When you take the square root of the 4, that's what makes it a 2. And 7 times 2 is 14. Can I just point out, I think this is exactly how I would have set it out. But just be watchful. It's really easy while you're sort of in autopilot or rushing through a question to see that. Say, oh, I'm pulling out a 4. You remember, did you notice as I was talking about these questions? You're not pulling out 4. You're pulling out the square root of 4, which is 2. And that's why this ends up 14 not 28. It's very easy to sort of, you colloquially have in your mind, oh, pull out the 4, it's not a 4. So just be watchful what you're doing. Uh, 8 root 11 looks perfect, so good job. You've already got this on your working, so you don't need to write it again, but I rubbed it off, so that's why I put it back. Um, you just did this question, right? Square root of 20, 275, we simplified it in this exact way. And you guys know what the square root of 25 is, so once you evaluate that, out comes your answer of 5 root 11. This is with concrete numbers, okay? One of the things we like to do as mathematicians is say, you know what, this is always true, no matter what kind of combination of numbers you've got. So we would put this together as a rule, and we've already written this, that if you've got a product of two numbers, I can split it apart into its, does anyone remember? If you've got a product, what are the two numbers that you get out from the end call? They start with F. They're called factors, very good. You can split a product into its factors. You can split one square root into two. So in this case, what I can say is, it's the square root of A times the square root of B. So long as A and B are positive numbers. Different weird things happen when A and B are negative, but we're just dealing with positive numbers, the ones we can measure, the ones that come out of things like Pythagoras' theorem. Now what I want you to notice is, just like if you, for example, take up the most famous equation in all of history, which is, does anyone know what the e most famous is? E equals mc squared. Right? Does anyone know what the c is in this case? The c? Constant. It is a particular constant. The particular constant is the speed of light, which is really fast. It's a really big number. What happens when you square a big number? It gets even bigger. Okay. So all this is saying is, if you've got a little tiny bit of mass, that's what the m is for, right? You can convert that into a whole lot of energy, and that's the whole principle behind nuclear power, nuclear weapons, and so on. Okay? But every equation, because it's an equal sign, right, can also be read in reverse. If I can say a little bit of mass will give you a lot of energy, I can also say if you've got a lot of energy, you can convert that into mass. The same thing is happening here. Right? We're used to going in this direction. Take one number, split it into its pieces, factors, right? And you can get two square roots out of one. But you can just as easily go in the opposite direction, right? Same equation, write it down with me. If I had two separate square roots, so long as they're positive, then if you multiply them, you can go back where you came from, right? Writing an equation, this equals that is the same as that equals this. It's the same thing, but it means I can go in different directions depending on what's convenient to me. Okay. So, as an example, I have an example over here. Okay. So if I ask you to do this, okay, just following straight on. Square root of 7 times the square root of 5, if I'm following this idea here, if I wanted to combine these two into one square root, what's 7 times 5? 35. Cool, 35. Now, why is this useful to me? I can think of at least two reasons. Number one, uh, sometimes it's 
more convenient to write one number rather than two. And you remember before, the reason we split this apart is because this is useful. Do you agree? You remember we simplified that, so that was good. So sometimes splitting apart has a purpose. But do you see here, you don't get anything of an advantage when they're split apart. You can't do anything with this, you can't do anything with that, so you're like, oh, great, you know, there are two square roots just hanging out. You might as well, rather than write two numbers, you might as well write them as one. There's one other quick advantage, which is that um, the square root of seven, does anyone know what the square root of seven is, roughly? Like, just have a guess. It's between the square root of four and the square root of nine, right? Which is between two and three. So like two and a half, something like that. I, I don't actually know, just roughly. Same thing with this one. I think it's about, I don't know, maybe 2.2 or 2.1, thereabouts. Okay. Now, I've got a rough idea what each of these is. I could multiply them together with my rough idea. But clearly, it's much better to say, if I have to estimate one number rather than two, that's better, isn't it? What's a square number really close to this? 36 is very close. So the square root of 36 is exactly 6. This is a bit under that. So maybe it's about 5.8, 5.9. Is someone to tell me what it actually is? 5.91. Okay. So clearly, number one, it's just quicker to estimate one number rather than two. Secondly, I get more accuracy. Like if these are both off by a little bit, then when I multiply, my little, little errors get bigger and bigger and bigger. So here, I can go straight to a much more accurate idea. Okay. So that's the multiplication. Right beside that, I want you to think about division. So here's multiplication. If this is the way multiplication works, how do you think division works? Hmm. Because division and multiplication are really two sides of the same coin, right? In fact, every division like this can be written as a multiplication. How would you write this as multiplying rather than dividing? It's 8 times what? Hmm. Well, what is 8 divided by 2? 8 divided by 2, of course, is 4, right? So the thing you've got to multiply 8 by to get 4 is a half, right? So that, that's the same thing. Okay. So therefore, because multiplication and division are really the same thing in different clothes, exactly the same idea applies. I can take two square roots and I can combine them into one big one. Right? So I can say that's just A over B. Like that. It's just that I'm dividing instead of multiplying. So as an example, the square root of 6 divided by the square root of 2. Because just like multiplication with division, I can combine these two square roots, these two thirds, into one big one. Right? Uh, and of course, 6 divided by 2 is root 3. So you get the same advantage as I was mentioning before. It's clearly better to write one number rather than two. And, excuse me, um, I don't have to approximate two numbers and then try and calculate. I can just approximate one number, and I'm pretty sure that's about 1.73. And you're going to see root three come up in your calculator a lot, so you'll probably get used to that as well. Okay. Right, so, simple idea. Combine together when you multiply. Combine together when you divide. Maybe you want to put like a nice big box around this and this, because the things you're going to refer to as you're working through these. Why don't you have a shot 